SMT Nation, we back. Nation, we just caught wind of an announcement from T-Mobile that network slicing was on deck, and there was proof of concept at a Red Bull event in which the T-Mobile network and its suite of features were able to be leveraged to you know, provide specialized network configurations, right? 5G standalone networks, utilizing the network slicing capabilities, kind of creating a solution that was going to provide you know, a, a really solid broadcasting capability for the Red Bull group, and then also keeping customers, you know, on the network connected. And, you know, we're talking about, obviously, you need a lot of dedicated uplink for these types of things. And in my estimation, when you got events like, you know, Red Bull, where you're going to have like 20,000 people there, you're filling up arenas and events, you really got to have millimeter wave there. And actually, when you think about it, that's what proper network slicing is probably going to require is going to you know need lots of bandwidth it's going to need the ultra high frequencies for the sake of latency right being as low as possible so i'm sure they probably had some millimeter wave there and some nodes and stuff like that and they were able to put together a really good experience for their customers that are on site and then also you know the the, the folks at red bull that were running the event so this is proof of concept you know, I was getting a lot of questions on the announcement video that I made and, you know, people kind of trying to understand what the network slicing is. And it's, it's actually pretty simple. You basically construct a miniature version of a network that a, maybe an enterprise, for example, might require. Maybe it's, a, you know, latency below 10 milliseconds. Maybe it's uplink of at least 100 megabits per second. Maybe it's the downlink throughput that's re the requirement. Maybe you need dedicated 200 megabits per second, you know, for specific devices. But you basically take a macro network, a big network, and create a mini small network, kind of like a box within a box, within the parameters that are required for those connected services. So, you know, the, and then people followed up more questions asking, does this mean that all the devices not within that slice become deprioritized and the answer to that is no they don't get deprioritized but the network slice that was created for the specialized use case gets a guaranteed quality of service this is something that the t-mobile network sorely needs you know we have seen time and time again some of the most unusual network management phenomena occur on the t-mobile network we've seen all types of stuff and, you know, T-Mobile has been pretty clear about not doing network slicing for their T-Mobile home internet. But I think, folks, something like this makes it very clear that it's something they can do and it's something that they should do because you have people paying 50 plus dollars a month for T-Mobile home internet and they're not getting any type of priority. I think a network slice fits pretty well for at least business and enterprise grade solutions. This is going to be an absolute savior for folks that want to utilize the T-Mobile home internet. And of course, because it's an enterprise solution, these folks are going to pay top dollar for this network access. I don't think T-Mobile is going to have a hard time giving them a dedicated Q QoS. But for all the free lines out there, for all the folks that are on just a mobile line, you know, this is not for you. You know, the T-Mobile SA 5G network for you is like... You know, you're just connected to N41, you're connected to N71. See, the folks on these slices, it's not about connecting to a band. They're connecting to network assets. You see what I'm saying? They're, they're connecting to, you know, a guaranteed QoS or QCI, something that has been absent from T-Mobile. So in my opinion, these capabilities are things that T-Mobile can monetize. They've had the tools, they've had the spectrum. It's time they put it to use, and hopefully they can rewrite the history on what has been a lackluster reliability at the T-Mobile network. They can change some of that. I don't I don't think this helps their calling or anything like that, but I mean, it, it is something that I think their network really does need because AT&T and Verizon have been operating very good QCI levels and network management tools, especially when it comes to enterprise and business and first responders, and who knows? Maybe T-Mobile can actually build a first responder slice. What do you guys think of that? Or, or you know, s something along those lines. I'm really excited for T-Mobile. I'm glad to see that they're out ahead in this. 
right? It's their opportunity to seize and uh, they shouldn't squander it. I hope they're able to take advantage of it. And, you know, the, the CTO, John Saw, has an opportunity here to push forward. He's always been an innovative mind. You know, Dr. John Saw deserves a lot of, you know, props for what he did with Sprint and Clearwire. And, you know, him being at the head of these projects, I think, is very exciting. Along with Ulf, whatever his name is. I don't know. Whoever the guy is that's replacing Neville. Anyways, tell me what you guys think of, you know, the network slicing capability, what it means for T-Mobile, how it was utilized, and what it means to you. And if you, you know, think this is something they can leverage that can maybe distinguish them from the competitors who seem a little bit more bearish on SA, you know, network cores and network slicing today right they're kind of looking more down the line more in the future but t-mobile kind of you know aggressively attacking this now thoughts and opinions welcome down below you are the voice of the people the smt nation let your voice be heard and don't forget if you want to support the smt you can do so by checking out the links in the description ways to support us are there thanks for watching see you all in the next one peace